Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here, and there has been some drama going on when it comes to Bill C2, the bill that's hoping to bring back the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit, as well as the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit, as well as creating the Canada Worker Lockdown Benefit, as well as a number of different things. And all this drama stems from a committee hearing where Christopher Freeland, the Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister, had to testify in front of the Federal Finance Committee. Some people on these committees are pushing for a reinstatement of benefits like the CRB, others are pushing for an elimination of clawbacks as well as benefit debt, and others are more concerned about the amount of spending that could drive up even more inflation that could hit people where it hurts uh, because this bill would be approving roughly $7 billion in new spending. Meanwhile, Christia Freeland is promising each of these people that they're going to be able to provide different and new supports for people, but the details are quite murky. So in today's video, you're going to find out exactly what has been going on, but before you do, make sure to subscribe to the channel, as well as checking out those links in the description. When you use any of them, you directly support the channel, so I appreciate that. But let's get into this because Jagmeet Singh, before this finance committee meeting, uh, went out in front of the media and said, hey, we do not like this bill, and here's why. The Liberals are proposing to cut help to people while we still need to get people that support. And so that's why we're opposed to the bill. But in addition, we've said two alternatives. One is if the employment insurance was changed and reformed so that 60% of Canadians who aren't covered right now were covered, we would be open to ending pandemic benefits and replace them with a reformed EI that actually works for all Canadians. That was one option. But no matter what happens with, with uh, the government's approach to pandemic benefits, we are adamant that they need to immediately stop the clawbacks. These, this is not a thing that the government can wait and say it's going to take weeks to solve. We've got families right now, seniors right now, that are desperately calling our offices, letting us know that they cannot pay their bills. They can't pay rent. There's no reason why a senior on GIS, a vulnerable senior who doesn't have enough resources to get by, should have their back because they needed help in the pandemic. There is no justification for that. So it's pretty clear that the NDP are against Bill C-2 in its current form. He does say that if they were able to actually reform the EI program, then maybe yes, it makes sense to cut off pandemic benefits because people would be covered under some other social safety net. Um, but the, this is likely not going to come very quickly, although it is something that the Liberals have said they are working on, but when that actually comes isn't determined as of yet. But luckily for the Liberals, they don't need the NDP to pass this bill. All they need is the support from one other opposition party, either the Bloc Quebecois, the NDP, or the Conservatives. If they can get that support, they can get this bill passed. But inside of this committee meeting, Christian Freeland was questioned for two hours straight from all of these opposition parties, and, well, every single party has something to say that they think is wrong with it. Uh, let's listen in on this, where Christian Freeland tries to address some of these major concerns from the opposition parties. There have been bumps along the way. Unfortunately, some seniors who received COVID supports have seen their GIS benefits affected. Our government, very much including me personally, is very aware of this issue and is actively seeking a solution. Our most vulnerable seniors should not be penalized, particularly those who lost income due to the pandemic. We know that many seniors rely on GIS payments to help make ends meet, and I am confident that the government will have more to say on this issue in the next few days. Uh, during the campaign, we made the commitment of uh, providing targeted support for workers who uh, are self-employed. And uh, we want in this uh, bill to be able to deliver help as quickly as possible and to keep the promise that we made to artists so that they can continue uh, to grow here in Canada and throughout the world. We will be able to give you further detail very soon. So in her opening remarks, Christa Freeland tries her best to pre-answer the questions that she thinks she's going to get, both from the NDP and the Bloc Quebecois. The NDP would certainly ask about these GIS clawbacks um, for low-income seniors. That has been an issue for quite some time now. And the Bloc Quebecois have also said that they're concerned that uh, this doesn't give any sort of direct support both to people who are self-employed and people who are working in the arts and culture sector, which largely hasn't rebounded since the uh, this, the pandemic has sort of uh, slowed down a little bit here. So to both of these issues, Christopher Freeland says, hey, we're going to solve the GIS issue. We're going to solve and provide direct support for people who are self-employed and working in arts and culture, but that's all the detail that she gives at this point and just says, 
says, hey, you're going to need to trust us uh, that we're going to do this in the future. And this didn't quite sit right for Gabrielle Saint-Marie, who is a Bloc Quebecois MP, who actually works quite well with uh, other opposition parties uh, to get things done in these committees. Let's listen in on what he has to say. Um, why are you not offering uh, the uh, recovery support to them? And uh, what would you offer then uh, to these individuals? Because certainly uh, the, these people uh, have difficulty finding jobs in other sectors. During the campaign, uh, we committed uh, to uh, working on a program for them. And I can reiterate to you today and to say publicly that we are in the process of doing that. We are going to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. So the Bloc Quebecois wants this support for the arts and culture sector, as well as support for self-employed individuals to be included in Bill C-2. What Christian Freeland is saying is like, hey, we want you to pass Bill C-2. We're not going to inclu include that support for uh, self-employed workers, but you got to trust us because we are planning on doing it. Uh, it's not an entirely satisfying question, especially given we only have a couple weeks to make changes uh, before they take a break until the end of January. And the NDP got a similar response when they pushed hard on the GIS and CCB clawbacks that we're seeing. Let's listen on uh, in on Daniel Blakey as he asks a similar question and gets a similar response. Middle class Canadian families are certainly feeling the pinch at the grocery store as are the financially vulnerable people living with disabilities, seniors on fixed incomes. One of the th roles that government can play is to support people financially in what continues to be a difficult time because of the pandemic. But in fact, a lot of vulnerable people, whether it's low-income families on the CCB, recipients of the Canada Worker Benefit, or uh, GIS recipients are seeing their benefits clawed back. And I know you talked a little bit about the GIS issue in your opening remarks. But C2 doesn't actually include any provisions that would prevent the clawback uh, that we're seeing. So, I mean, it's one thing to have to address it retroactively for the CERB and for the CRB. The Canada Worker Lockdown Benefit is a forward-looking benefit. Um, but there's nothing in there that would prevent the kind of clawback that we're, that we're seeing. So I'm wondering why your government chose not to include anything that would prevent a similar clawback in this legislation. Just to reiterate on the GIS, um, because that's a point that you have raised in the past and uh, that the Bloc has also raised, the GIS and the CRB clawbacks. Uh, we recognize that this is a challenge. And we recognize that we need to address it. It is pretty technically complicated, uh, but we will address that challenge. There is an affordability challenge, especially for the most vulnerable Canadians. That is certainly true, and it's something that we're thoughtful about. So when questioned about all of these clawbacks, Christian Freeland says, yes, we know this is a problem, and we're going to do something about it. But much like the previous question asked by the Bloc Quebecois, uh, that's just a promise, and it's not anything that's actually going to be changed with Bill C-2. So again, the question comes up with these very timely issues with people struggling to pay their bills and to pay for rent. Uh, is this sort of change that Christopher Freeland and the Liberals are promising actually going to come in in any timely manner with the limited time that they have in the House of Commons as of now? Uh, remember, if they don't pass things by December 17th, well, we have to wait all the way until the end of uh, January when they're back from their winter break. But on the other side of things, the Conservatives don't really want to support this bill either. They're less concerned about these clawbacks as well as the uh, the benefits that are being sort of uh, taken away. Uh, but what they're more concerned about is the inflation that could be driven by an additional $7 billion of spending, especially given that so many people are struggling to uh, keep up with the uh, increasing cost of living, uh, largely due to the mass amounts of money being added into the system, uh, some would say as a result of this increased government spending. When questioned about the rising cost of living due to inflation, the Liberals will traditionally say, well, we're seeing this level of inflation across the entire world. Uh, it's not our fault. And I think that this uh, comment from this Conservative MP inside of this hearing in the Finance Committee sums up why that response is a little bit frustrating. About a week and a half ago, we couldn't even get your government to admit that inflation was a problem. Then you did admit it was a problem, but you said, well, it's not Canada's problem. It's happening globally. And you basically have no solution 
solution to it. So when you're coming to our committee and you're defending your statement saying that deflation or deflation is going to be the problem, not inflation, you're not admitting that you were wrong and that it's having a, a major effect on Canadians. You offer no solution. You're saying, well, it's not really our problem. We're in government, but we're not going to do anything. Maybe pump 7.2 or more, more billion dollars into this problem. That does not give comfort to Canadians who are dealing with high gas prices, high food costs, higher housing prices. These are real problems that everyday parents, seniors are dealing with. That's there, your time, Ms. Bergen. There's a confidence problem we, with you, Minister. We're now moving to the Liberals for six minutes. Thank you. And all of this discussion just makes me realize that all of the opposition parties are kind of fighting for the same thing. Everybody wants to see less income and wealth inequality in Canada. Everyone wants to see low-income Canadians supported, uh, but they just have different ideas on how to do it. Uh, now, when it comes to whether or not this Bill C-2 will be passed in its current form, well, I think that that all lies on whether or not the NDP and the Bloc Quebecois were convinced by Christian Freeland that she is really going to, and her government is really going to do the things that they want to do, um, bringing in this new self-employed support, uh, as well as bringing uh, or eliminating the clawbacks for GIS, uh, as well as other pandemic debt. This is something that Christian Freeland, like we went over in this video, promised uh, inside of this committee meeting, but uh, talk is cheap, right? Whether or not these are actually going to get implemented is something that uh, the NDP and Bloc Quebecois are going to have to think very hard about before they pass this bill. Uh, the other sort of tactic that the Liberals have brought in is that this needs to be passed very quickly, uh, meaning that additional debate and change to the bill may not happen. And if the bill doesn't get passed, well, all these sort of uh, smaller supports that are included inside of the bill, well, they won't get extended and they won't be able to actually function. So uh, the opposition is definitely stuck between a rock and a hard place here. But no matter which way the vote goes and whatever changes are made to this bill, I'm going to let you know exactly what's going on right here on the channel. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Also, while you're down there, leave me a comment. I read every single one and I try to get back to as many as I possibly can. Again, if you'd like to support the channel by opening up investment accounts or uh, potentially purchasing cryptocurrency, if that's something that you're interested in, whenever you use those links in the description, it helps support the channel directly. So thank you for that. But with all that said, I hope this video has helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.